Hello again and welcome to Lillybrook. This is the Hairy Golfer. Another little video for you. Before I start, I don't often do this, but can I beg you to subscribe and hit that like button and especially leave comments. I really want to hear what you, you're thinking, especially about this video coming up. Now I quite often bang on about the short game and there's two very good reasons for this. Number one, and I rehearsed this and I've forgotten it, but number one is there are no barriers to having a decent short game, chipping and putting. It doesn't matter if you're 10 years old, 70 years old, it doesn't matter if you're a short ass like me or whether you're six foot six up here somewhere. There are no physical barriers to being able to chip and putt. All you need is an imagination, a couple of clubs and a bit of practice and you'll start rolling that ball up near the hole. The second reason I bang on about the short game is because we miss greens. We're amateurs. I mean, even the pros miss a lot of greens. On a bad day, we miss a lot of greens on a good day. So 18 times around, you're trying to hit a green. How many times do you hit that green? So how many times have you got an opportunity to turn three shots into two? And how many times do you actually achieve that? And this is what the short game's all about is reducing our score. And it is the easiest way to reduce the score because we do not need the physical attributes of a Rory McIlroy or a DJ or a Bison. Bryson? Yeah, Bison's probably more suitable. So comment below. What you're about to see is a real round of golf. It is the first time I tried 18 holes after having my leg done. So my game was a bit rusty. Now bizarrely, it starts over there on the second green just behind you, and it's not me trying to turn three shots into two, it's me being realistic and trying not to turn three shots into four. So, as it was so long ago, I can't tell you right now how many times I got up and down, but my target is always 50% or 55%, you know, five out of eight, five out of nine. 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10 better. That's my target, that's realistic. I think you can do it. Now, if you don't think you can do it, then write that comment below. Write that comment and say, Simon, I cannot achieve 50, 55%. And before you hit send, or whatever the thing is, just read it back to yourself. See you over there on the second. So here it is, I'm under the tree, I can't go up in the air, to go over the corner of the bunker I would need to go up in the air. So I'm using the pitching wedge and I'm hitting it hard enough to get it through the rough and onto the green. And this was about as good as I could do, 20 to 25 feet. Roll that up for a tap in and I've avoided the big number by trying to sneak over the edge of the bunker. And sometimes that's all you can do. We come to the third, I've gone long and left, I'm coming down the hill, I'm dead. I, I can't think of any way of stopping this ball by the hole. Little run with the pitching wedge again, and it's just gone miles, so first time around we failed to turn three into two and that wasn't far away from turning three into two but again up that bank that was probably the very best I could do now we're on the fourth I've had a bit of tree trouble so this is actually my third shot it's from about 75 so it's just a, a sand wedge I don't suppose this is really about the short game but sometimes you do get the opportunity to turn three shots into two from 75 yards out. Thank you very much. <laughs> now we're on the fifth green. I've actually hit the green, but this is a difficult putt. It's uphill and it turns rather sharply left. So I suppose we've got to include some putting. Somehow, it's finished right behind the hole. Such is life. 
Now we're on six. I've got a couple of little slopes in front of me to negotiate. And I really had to pick my spot there with the sand wedge. You can see it better from here. That little shoulder that I've had to chip across. Seven. Yet another bad tee shot. I'm in the bunker. Now, I don't really expect to turn three shots into two from out of a bunker. Simply because all bunkers are different. Some are pretty bare. Some have got the Sahara dumped in them. But we can certainly try. An ordinary splash shot. And try and get it inside 20 feet and can the putt. So I've failed yet again to turn three shots into two. Back of the eighth. Yep, I knifed it through the back. Just below the level of the green and the green runs away from me. So this is a little sand wedge. Pop it up. Let it run out. Yeah, I could have done with that being a bit closer. But if we've practiced our four and five footers, as we ought to, then four or five feet is just enough. This one's 11, I'm a long way away, and I've just got to come up the new step in the green. Just there. It's a little bit of an awkward step, that is, so that's why I included it in this. And a backhanded par. Side of the 12th. Now, as you can see, this area is chewed up by feet in the winter. So sometimes you just can't play a good shot because of the lie. You've got to accept that and hope to do the business with the putter. Well, I, I think I could have probably have done a little better than this. So, missing the green on the correct side also means thinking about where's the exit to this green? Because I don't want to be in the chewed up stuff. Right, short of 13, I'm on a tight lie, I'm taking the sand wedge. and I've stuck the leading edge into the ground. That was up over the false front and then it's down to the hole. So what I was attempting to do was to throw it up on top with spin and have it trickle down to the hole. But it doesn't work when you stick the leading edge into the ground. Perhaps it would have been better with a straight face club. Put up with going three or four feet past the hole rather than trying to be cute and fancy and finding out that actually I'm not quite as good as Phil Mickelson. Right of 14, decent lie, a fairly simple little chip. But it's a bit quick down there. It's a bit quick down to that front left flag. Thankfully we get the one back. So we've turned three shots into two. What hole's this? I've forgotten what hole this is. Ah, it's 15! So I'd missed the green just a little bit left and I've thrown it up with the sand wedge. Sometimes when you're on the upslope, the ball will go to the left and I hadn't taken that into account which left me a nasty downhiller and unlike the 8th where I got it this time I didn't get it so failure to get 3 shots into 2 front of 16 come up short again on the upslope pitching onto a slight downslope into the bowl of the green that's not bad the only time you can get inside five feet, that's not bad at all. Yep, take the flag out. There's something that I keep forgetting to do, and I think when I'm on camera, I'm in too much of a hurry not to hold up the game behind that I don't take the flag out. But it's always worth taking the flag out, because the back of the cup is a lot softer than a metal flag stick. And we've all seen many putts 
hit the flag stick and stay out. Final one is back left of 17, chipping onto a downslope with some borrow. And that did finally turn for me. So this time I am turning three shots into two. I'm going to do some adding up and put some graphics on and try and work out how often I did it. And the final one is 18. Chipping from the heavy stuff onto a very, very steep slope. I got to admit, I did not get that far enough up the slope. I didn't hit it hard enough, but it's uh, it's been kind to me and trickled down close enough for the one-handed tap in. So a lot of mistakes there, and I'm sure you can do better than that with a little practice.